Well, welcome tonight, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, here for our Bible study. My name is Dave Everett. This is my wife, Sherry. And we just thank you for joining our Bible study today. Uh, we're glad that you can. Uh, we are doing a Bible study on uh, Don't Let Me God by Andrew Womack. We're in the last chapter uh, on imaginations, and I'm not quite sure we'll quite finish the chapter today. Uh, I think we're going to have at least one more week on this uh, book. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a church here in the Lighthouse Discipleship Center. Uh, we have a website, lighthousediscipleship.org. And on that website, you can look at our previous messages, our Bible studies uh, on this series. Uh, if you need directions on how to find that, uh, just let me know in the comments. And I, I will direct you to that. Uh, as well as if, feel free to, to reach out in, in the comments below and just say, Hello, where are you from? If you have any questions pertaining to the Bible study tonight, feel free to, to join in our conversation. As well as, if you have any prayer requests, let us know as well. Uh, if you have a private request or whatnot, feel free to, to reach us on Messenger or through our website contact page. We have our both our phone number where you can text us or call us, as well as our all of our contact information. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. We have we're, again we're doing. Uh, Don't Limit God by Andrew Womack. We're in the last chapter talking about imaginations. And uh, imagination is very powerful. And so, uh, um, you know, God created us with imaginations for a purpose. And, uh, but they can also be uh, deterrent on whether we, uh, I think I'm using that word, uh, it's, it's a tool that we can use uh, that we, in a positive way or negative way. You know, we can either limit God or we can see God work in our lives based on our imaginations. Bible said, and I think we're going to get into the verse tonight, when I'm, as a man thinketh, so is he. And so, uh, uh, we'll probably get into that verse tonight. Uh, anyway, uh, without further ado, Sherry's going to be our narrator as we go forward. Uh, this title of this section, uh, we, as we're on our second week in this last chapter, we started last week, is How Do You See Yourself? And so, uh, without further ado, uh, Sherry, want to go ahead and uh, narrate for us. Okay, How Do You See Yourself? Today, people talk about being over the hill at the age of 40. They look at sick people in their 70s or 80s and think they have to be like them one day. They start talking about and anticipating the problems they are going to have when they get older, and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. We need to see ourselves as God sees us. His vision for us is revealed in His Word. Earlier, I talked about how Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his eyesight was not dim, nor his natural force abated, Deuteronomy 34.7. We have a superior covenant to the one Moses had, so if he could be healthy and live to be 120 years old, then we can too. We have to change the way we think. We need to study the word and imagine the truths God has given us until they paint a picture on the inside of us, until we see ourselves healthy, righteous, and full of peace and joy. We can never see anything happen on the outside unless we see it happen on the inside first. Many of you are praying for big things to happen. Restoration of your marriage, healing in your body, or prosperity in your finances. You are praying for these things, but you can't see them, and it's frustrating. But if you'll just meditate on the word and allow it to paint a picture on the inside of you, it will come to pass. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Paul said, we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. As Christians, our imaginations should paint such a real picture that we live by what the Word says more than we live by what we can see with our physical eyes. We can do that. We have God Almighty living inside us. Are you picturing what God's Word says about you? Can you see yourself healed? Can you see yourself prosperous? Can you see yourself doing the miracles Jesus did? If not, you need to meditate on the Word of God until you can see yourself doing these things. You need to change the way you see yourself. You need to see yourself as God sees you. You need to take the limits off and engage your imagination in order to see God's will for your life come to pass. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're doing our Bible study of Don't Limit God by Andrew Womack. We're talking about imaginations in this chapter, and specifically in this section, uh, it's titled, How Do You See Yourself? 
And uh, again, I just want to make a little quick note to we are trying some things on our live stream uh, here on Facebook Live. Uh, those who are watching here, I haven't seen any interruption, but we've been trying some things. We even uh, put some announcements out this week, and we're trying to get it uh, streamlined so that we can show it directly on our website uh, in addition to Facebook Live. Uh, live, uh, but we're getting some speed bumps in this uh, transition and setup with that. So, part of Nelson uh, this week and the next couple weeks as we are trying to streamline this a little better um, and actually a little more efficient as well. Because on that on that new streamline page, we would be on our website. We would have a place for for worship. We would have a place for uh, prayer requests. Um, we would have a place for for you to take notes uh, as well as some other. Uh, benefits that we have as well uh, as associated with our church and our website. Uh, but I just uh, will give another avenue for people. Anyway, my point in mentioning that is not so much an announcement yet, but uh, more so um, the fact that uh, uh, we're not trying to frustrate anyone if things aren't working. We're, we're frustrating ourselves. But, uh, uh, but at the same point in time, uh, just be patient as we are uh, just trying to make this even better. Uh, so, uh, anyway, now for their do. Uh, I want to piggyback on what Sherry just read. You know, the Word of God is is so key. Uh, what, you know, it seems like we always come back to our relationship with God and uh, and everything we talk about in this Bible study and, and other other conversations we've had. You know, and one of those main ways that we have a relationship with God is not the only way, but it was, it's, I think it's one of the main ways is through the Word of God. The Bible says in James that the Word of God is like a mirror. You know, a mirror is a reflective device where you see what yourself, or you see whatever is reflecting on that mirror. But primarily, we look into the mirror to see ourselves. The Word of God is a mirror. And unless we have a regular healthy diet of the Word of God, a regular healthy diet of, of studying and, re, and having a relationship uh, with the Word of God. You know, sometimes people will just kind of cherry pick and and, and get a verse here and there, and, and in one sense, there's nothing wrong with that. But I want a relationship with the Word. Uh, I don't want I don't want to treat it like a horoscope. I don't want to treat it like a you know something. I, I want to have a relationship with the Word. I want to breathe the Word. It's our daily bread. Uh, and so um, anyway, there's so many things I can say along those lines. But if we have a regular, constant relationship with the Word of God, we're going to see not only God for who He is, but we're going to see ourselves the way we God sees us. We should see ourselves the way God sees us. If we are seeing ourselves better than where God sees us, that's wrong. If we see ourselves below the standard that God sees us, that's also wrong. Both of those are pride. Because we think our opinion of ourselves is, is, is more accurate, more true than what God says. We need to see ourselves the way God sees us. And uh, we need to see ourselves that way. And not only, not only to start this Christian life, but throughout the Christian life. But there's times where, you know, I preach this, I teach this, but there's times I lose sight of who I am. Uh, because of circumstances, because of what some other people say or do to us, uh, whether it be positive or negative. Um, uh, some, and different things. Sometimes what I, you know, we're, we're our... Oh, critics, we are very hard on all our, ourselves, you know. And so, and then I just going through, through the issues of life. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issue of life. Well, we need the, how do you guard your heart? Well, first of all, it's having a constant relationship with God. Uh, a good relationship and fellowship with, with, uh, with uh, fellow believers is, is also key, as well as some other things. And uh and so we need to have a, a healthy relationship with God. We need, and out of that relationship, out of, and out of, I mean, in one sense, you've got to get out of this what you put into it, this relationship and the, the Word of God. But, uh, uh, you know, not only does the Word of God give us an opinion of who we are, the world, our society, our families, our friends, our enemies uh, also give us a view of who we are. Uh, we have our own view of who we are. And our view of who we are needs to line up with what God, how God sees us. Uh, religion will sometimes put ourselves below how God sees us. Sometimes it will put us above. Um, uh, but at the same point in time, we need to have a healthy, accurate perception of who we are. Um, and so if we don't, we're going 
we're going to have problems. And we're going to either miss, and, and in context of what we're studying, of not loving God, if we don't see ourselves the way God sees us, chances are, very high, is that we are limiting God. Uh, you know, and so, I don't want to limit God. I want to see the fullness of God work in my life. Therefore, I need to see myself the way God sees me. It's very important that I do that. And so, anything you want to uh, piggyback on that? There's just so much in the Word of, of God related to who we are in Christ. And it's not... It's not a prideful thing. I can go on so many different tangents. You know, the, the world, or even Christians, has kind of made up their minds on who Christians are and how we're supposed to either respond in life, how we're supposed to act, how we're supposed to live. Uh, but I, I, I certainly do wish that we would all get back to having that relationship with God being in Christ, uh, both Dave um, and I think we even took a Bible class uh, back when we went were in Bible college about in Christ realities, and there are realities that are in Christ for every believer, and we've lost sight of that. In Christ, we're not just overcomers; we we are more than overcomers. You know, uh, you, you might, I, I'm, I'm sorry, my mind goes on so many tangents and I'm trying to narrow them down to keep on point. And if, if we have that relationship with God, have that relationship with the, the written word, knowing his word and what he says about us, as well as having the relationship with the living word, Jesus Christ, which gives us that relationship with God our Father and God the Holy Spirit. You know, if we have that relationship, we can we can overcome anything. You know, Andrew only gave, I think, three things um, that people are praying for. Uh, restoration of marriage, healing in your body, or prosperity in finances. But there's boatloads of prayer requests that everyone has. And it's not narrowed down or limited to those three things. You know, we, we know someone who wants to make a job change. And so they are using their creativity, which is a gift from God. He is God our creator. He imagined and created this, this wonderful earth and everyone in it, and we are created in his image. So part of that creativity that, that we have is because of that creativity of God that is part of our DNA. And this person that we know of is using his creativity to come up with, okay, what would be a job that, that I would be... At? not only happy with, but I can excel at. You know, uh, I had been a caregiver for years and I limited God because I thought that's the only job I could do because I'm not trained in anything else. I don't have schooling in anything else. So I limited my thinking to that's the only job I'm going to, to ever have. And I was getting tired of it and I was trying to have a good attitude and for a while I did. Uh, thanks to actually a testimony of my own husband with um, a job he wasn't thrilled with, but he knew it was a stepping stone to be able to work until he could be exactly where God wanted him to be. And it, it was just a stepping stone in the right direction. And so when I got the, the right attitude for my job that I can not only am I blessed to be a blessing, I could be a blessing in my workplace, um, but I, but I had a, a better attitude about my job, but I still had that thought, okay, God, it's the only job I'm ever going to get because that's, that's my only training. But when we moved, I started looking for work outside of caregiving because of um, uh, just needing to find work. 
I actually found a, a job that I would have never dreamed of applying for, but I did because I looked outside the box and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I'm being a blessing there and it's, and it's blessing me. And of course, Dave and I weren't focused on the job itself to be our source. We focused on God, but it all t ties back to how do we see ourselves? I saw myself as limited, but when I did take the limits off God, my horizon, so to speak, expanded and I felt like I was using my giftings in a way I didn't think I had giftings in. And so when we see, like the examples Andrew had of restoration of marriage, healing in our body, prosperity in our finances. You know, we need to see what God's Word says about them. You know, Jesus came that we would have life and life more abundant. There's, is it First Peter, where he it talks about God giving us everything for life and godliness? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's so much in life that, that God has given us, but we limit Him because we, we, we think things like, I'm not worthy, uh, I'm not trained in it. I'm not good enough. But God doesn't see that. So are you are you thinking your opinion is better than God's? And, and I'm not trying to preach at anyone because I'm pointing all fingers back at me. There's a lot of times when I have a very bad self-esteem, but that's not how God created us to be. You know, he created us to be part of the family of God. He created us to be worshipers of him he created us to be his own children we get to sit at his banqueting table his banner over us is love he sees no flaw in us he doesn't remember our sins anymore so so why are we seeing us anything else than what god sees us and it shouldn't be a pride thing i i can't say well ha ha i can do whatever i want because god sees me like this no it's it's an an awe reverence that my awesome mighty father loves me so much I want to give back I want other people to be transformed in their lives because that's what God has done for me you know uh, I, I want to piggyback on these last two uh, paragraphs of this section but uh, let me just deal with the uh, first one first uh, let me reread part of it. It says, Paul said, we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, as Christians, our, our imagination should paint such a real picture that we live by what the Word says more than we live by what we can see with our physical eyes. We can do that. We have Almighty God living on the inside of us. You know, again, he says, we are to live by faith and not by sight. You know, I love that. How does faith come? By the Word of God. So we can live by faith. We can live by the word. And it's a walk. It's not just a, a Sunday experience. It's not just a Bible study time. It's a walk. We walk by faith. That's how we live this life. We live. It says the just live by faith. Where does faith come from? Having a relationship with the word of God. And in that relationship, we're not having a relationship with the word of God just by, in one sense, doing a Bible study or devotions. Praise God for those things. But if it's just out of duty, if it's just out of duty, that's what we do, then that's no relationship. Uh, we're not going to get faith necessary out of that. We have to walk. We have to have a relationship with it. We have to believe it. We have to... Uh, and at the same point in time, even if we're doing it out of duty, we can still get a nugget. We can still... The Word of God is still powerful, so I'm not going to ever water that down completely. But at the same point in time, we're not we're gonna limit God if uh, if our heart's not in. If that makes sense, uh, in any relationship, if your heart's not in, you aren't gonna get out of it. What do you put in there? And in that in that regard, with the marriage, with the employer employee relationship, with the parent child relationship, with the friendship, uh, you know, it's it's uh, you put it, you get out of it. Pressure, what you put into it. Um, you know, and, and with our relationship with God, and now I know with other relationships, we're also dependent on, it's a, you know, there's another party involved. We can't control them. But we know God's constant. He's faithful. And uh, we will get out of our relationship with God what we put into it. 
And we need to, we walk by faith. And so we need to see ourselves the way God sees us. But how do we know how God sees us? By the word of God. How, if we walk by faith, how do we have faith? By the word of God. How we see, our, we see ourselves the way God sees us, by faith. We shouldn't see ourselves above, better than God sees us. And we shouldn't see ourselves below or less than what God sees us. We should see ourselves the way God sees us. And we see ourselves the way God sees us by faith. And we walk by faith. That's how we walk. That's how we live. The just shall live by his faith. And so, but let me pick it back on this last paragraph of this section. It says, uh, he says, are you picturing what God's word says about you? Can you see yourselves healed? So let's, we're, he's taking it to another level here. Uh, it's really not another level, but another perspective. Another perception, another angle. Uh, if, not only do we need to see ourselves as God sees us in a general sense, we need to see, our, uh, we, we need to see ourselves forgiven. We need to see ourselves healed. He says, by his stripes, we were healed. Jesus healed everyone at the cross. By his stripes, we were healed. He was only stripped one time. Granted, it was 40 lashes, but at the same point in time, or 39 lashes, but he, that only happened once in history. He's not still being lashed for our sins. By his stripes, we were healed. And so we need to see ourselves healed. Can you see yourself prosperous, blessed? I mean, I can give you so many illustrations. When Israel was walking with God, they were blessed. When they were not walking with God, they were not blessed. And we, they were, we are, the blessing, that, the, the covenant to Abraham was that he was blessed to be a blessing. And it says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, If we are of Christ, then we are of Abraham's seed. Those blessings, those promises are for us. Can you see yourselves prosperous? It, your prosperity, I know some people don't like that word, but the, the Bible talks about it. The word salvation, soteria, in the Greek and, and Yeshua in, in the Hebrew, means prosperity. That's what the word salvation means. By definition, it means healing. It means holy, whole, wholeness. It means deliverance. It means forgiveness. It means uh, uh, prosperity is the word I was, I, I'm talking about. We will, and prosperity has more to do than just finances. But it also doesn't exclude finances. Uh, we need to have a prosperous soul. The Bible talks about that. 3 John verse 2. We need to have a prosperous mind. And we need to have a prosperous body. We need to have a prosperous relationship. A prosperous marriage. And, and what not. But we also need to be blessed. You know. The, the image that God paints of the church is not being poor as a church mouse. No, the church, the, the early church gave to everyone who was needed. It was not needy. They sold homes and different things to give to those in need. That's how the church operated when it began. I could go off on that. That's not my message. Or that's uh, this Bible study. But, you know, do, can you see, my God shall supply my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Can you see that my... I, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Can you see that? Can you imagine that? Can We need to allow the word of God not just to be words on a page or a card or whatever, however we read scripture. But it's the way of life. It's the bread of life. It's the word of God. Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is how we live. And we walk and we live by faith. Can you see yourselves doing the miracles Jesus did? Jesus said we could do them. We have the finished work of the cross. We have the fullness of God living in us bodily. We have, we, we have the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We have something, no other age in history between Genesis and between Adam and Christ, no other age has ever received the finished work of the cross the, and the baptism and the full and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We have those things at our disposal. Can you see yourselves doing miracles? Can you see yourselves healing the sick? Like Jesus sent out the twelve, and he sent out the seventy, freely you receive, freely give. He sent he told them, Go heal the sick. 
And how some people that, that message them, how can they can't heal people? Peter and John said, Silver and gold I have not, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. We have Jesus. We have we have we have Jesus, no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. We have Jesus, and we can offer Jesus to people, not just for forgiveness of sins, but we can offer Jesus so they can be healed, so they can be restored, that their prayers can be answered. We can, we, there, it's a full gospel. It's not just a part gospel, a half gospel, a quarter gospel. It's a full gospel. It's good news. The healed, the broken hearted, and set the captives free. And there's, there's so much. Can you see yourself through miracles? If not, you need to meditate on the Word of God. If you can't... Jesus rebuked the disciples for not calming the storms. He rebuked the disciples for not being not feeding, feeding the, the multitudes. Jesus ended up doing it, but he, 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 he reproved the, their lack of faith. He, he in one sense, and, and I think it's in Mark's... Uh, 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 book, he called it a hardness of heart because they didn't do miracles. We need to have such a diet of the Word of God that it's a, the Word of God is a mirror that we need to see ourselves operating how God says we can operate. By the power of the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God and by the fullness of Christ, the fullness of God in us. He said, he said in Ephesians, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, we are sitting with him on his throne. We, are, we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ, Revelation 5, 10, 9 and 10, that we've been redeemed by the blood of Christ to be kings and priests of the earth. All the promises are yes and amen in him to the glory of God by us. God wants to, God, we need to see ourselves operating in these things. If we don't, as Andrew said, we need to get into the Word of God and meditate on it. What, it mean, what does it mean to meditate? We do it all the time, no matter whether we're, we're talking about Scripture or not. How many of you meditate on what's going on in the world? How many meditate on if you have an illness or, uh, uh, or whatnot? How many of you spend a lot of time thinking about that? Or a hobby, or a fantasy, or, 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 or uh, even some of our jobs, we meditate on it all day long. We, we meditate on things when we drive. We meditate on things in the shower. We meditate on things when we lay, uh, trying to go to sleep at night. You know, we, 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 we try to get things off our mind. We meditate, we worry. Worry is a form of meditation in a negative sense. We worry, we, we stress, we, 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 we are, uh, are concerned. Those concerns, when we can't turn the mind, we're meditating on something. We, the word meditate means to mow over. We're like a, a cow who uh, is chewing his uh, cud, cu cuff, cud, cud uh, over and over again. That's a good thing if it's if it's true. The Bible says in Philippians chapter four, we need to meditate on what's good and lovely and think on these things. We need to rejoice always. And again, Paul says rejoice. We need to see ourselves healed. We need to see ourselves blessed. We need to see ourselves the way God sees. We need to see ourselves doing miracles. If we're not seeing ourselves doing miracles, then we are limiting God. That's not a condemnation. That, that may be a reproof. I need to see God working in me more. And uh, God, so many times we say we're waiting on God, but folks, we're, God is waiting on us. He's done the work. He's empowered us with his Holy Spirit. He's given us his word. And so, you know, the time is short. Jesus preached the word of God. He did miracles. He, there were times in Mark chapter 1, the whole city was standing at Peter's mother-in-law's mother door. The whole city. Could you imagine the whole city where you live standing at your door wanting to hear the gospel? You start raising the dead, you start healing the sick, you'll have all the revival you can handle. It's time for the church to wake up. We have the same power to raise Christ from the dead living on the inside of us. He said, great, he said uh, we can do 
He's able to do but beyond we could ever think or imagine according to his power that is at work. Not dormant, not passive, but at work and on the inside of us. God is able to do far, but we need to see ourselves. And we're not going to see ourselves We're not because we're not living by faith because we are not in the world. And the Word of God. If we are the Word of God, then we need to, to, to continue meditating on the Word of God. And we need to see ourselves doing what God says we can do. There's so many blessings. And we need to, we need to, they're not just to help us feel inspired. And, and even then, they're, supposed, they're inspiring us for what? Just so we feel good? Praise God for that. But if it's not just for a feeling... It's empowered us to do something. It's a living word. And anyway, I, 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 let me finish reading here. It says, you need to change the way you see yourselves. You need to see yourselves as God sees you. You need to take the limits off God and engage your imaginations in order to see God's will for your life come to pass. And that's just awesome. If we apply this, if we get a hold of this, and apply this. We can change the world upside down. The, the Twelve unlearned men. Eleven because of, of uh, Judas. But then we have people like Paul, Barnabas, Silas, Mark, Luke, and Luke, and others. But a few unlearned men turned the world upside down for Jesus Christ. They didn't have Wi-Fi. They didn't have Facebook Live. They didn't have other things. They didn't have COVID, but they also uh, had a lot of persecution. They were killing Christians like crazy. They wanted to, there was a lot of persecution going on in, in those days. Uh, and so, um, uh, all the apostles were eventually martyred. Except for John. They tried. They tried to fry the man. They, 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 so they put him on the on our island, our island of Patmos, and we're still receiving from John's letters today. He wrote five books. Uh, the Gospel of John. He wrote First John, Second John, Third John, Book of Revelation. And so, well, you know, they couldn't shut the man up. That's awesome. I mean, that's just awesome. I mean, they tried to fry the guy. I mean, a little facetious here, but they tried to find him. They couldn't do it. He wouldn't die. That's awesome. That's just awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's just... You know, anyway, uh, anyway, I, I need to be quiet for a moment. You have anything to share? I do. I just want to piggyback on what all Dave's saying. You know, we are in a time like no other where we have not only the finished work of the cross, but we have the Holy Spirit, and that that's just incredible. And if God told Joshua back it in... Uh, the Israelites coming into the promised land, if he said in Joshua 1, verse 7, Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This was back in whatever year it was, when Israel was just coming into the promised land, they had basically just gone through the 40 years in the desert. They had just been given the law. If God told Joshua, if you don't depart from it, uh, you may prosper wherever you go. We, we should be prosperous out of our ears living in this new covenant that Jesus died for. Jesus, Jesus overcame sin and death. He... He brought us back to right relationship with God. I mean, we should be, uh, how do they, they uh, describe Superman? You know, you should be able to leap tall buildings and, and do these, these mighty works because of Jesus. You know, we have way more than Joshua and the Israelites had. Praise God. God had set them apart to be his children. But as believers, we are part of that family of God. We are the 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 is it New Jerusalem? We 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 are we are part of Abraham's blood because of Jesus Christ. 
And so we should be more than prosperous uh, if you take just what the Israelites were, were promised back in, in Joshua. You know, we, we have what Jesus conquered. We have the Holy Spirit to, to lead us into all truth. We have, we have eternal life with God, which is relationship with God. You know, I mean, just being a child of God alone should be just knocking your socks off. Because as, as a child, you know, my, my childhood, if I was hungry, I could go into my parents' fridge and take out an apple or whatever I wanted if I was hungry. I didn't have to, to ask unless I wanted a cookie or something right before dinner. Maybe that would be a good time to ask. But I was allowed to go get a drink of water or a drink of milk or whatever it was. Even today, as an adult, my, my parents don't lock me out of the house. I knock on the door to, to be polite, but they, they, they even gave me a key. I, I could go in if I need to. I could break their fridge if I need to. I will, out of respect for my parents, I will ask politely, but I have that freedom. You know, back when we had started going to Bible college and I hadn't, uh, the revelation, I didn't have the re revelation on healing like I do now, there was a day I had to stay home because I was uh, dealing with, with being sick. And I called up my dad and I asked, hey, can you go to the store and get me some Gatorade? I, I need to get something to keep, you know, electrolytes in my body. And he dropped everything and went to go get it. You know, I have that right as his daughter to ask things like that. You know, what more does our Heavenly Father want to give to us if our earthly fathers are so willing to, to do that? And I get some people have a misconstrued idea about God because of, of their earthly fathers not being uh, a, a good father. But God is so much more. We can't compare him to, to an earthly father, good or bad. If you have a good father, it's easier to reconcile yourself with, with God's true nature. Uh, but, you know, we, we are his children. He's given us an inheritance in Christ. He's, he's made us overcome more than conquerors. You know, he, he's given to us, given to us, given to us. And... You know, uh, I think I saw uh, a response of Dave to someone who asked a question that so we shouldn't uh, do things to please God out of the, the law, like be, um, what was the word? Uh, well, just try to be holy on our own and, and try to do things uh, based on the law to please God. But we please God because we put our faith in Christ. And to me, the, the things I do to bless other people, bless my husband, uh, the things I do to live godly, I don't do those things out of uh, fear I'm, I'm not going to please God. I do it because of my heart's response of what God's done for me. So I'm not doing things by law. Because of my faith in Christ, I can live holy. Do I get in the flesh yes <laughs> sad to say but true I I can get in the flesh and I have done or said things that I am ashamed over because I have not walked in the spirit I've walked in the flesh but God helps us through those and he not only forgives us but he helps us go back to um, the just having that right relationship with God and I'm hoping I'm making sense here but my, my point is, if Israel, if Israel was, was blessed and prosperous because of being God's chosen back in Joshua's day, what more uh, prosperous body, soul, and spirit do we have now because of Jesus and the finished work of the cross? Right, right. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Um, well, let's go ahead and read a little bit more. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that. Uh, next, this section is called Seeing on the Inside. Uh, 
All right. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. John 14, 12. I began the process of seeing things on the inside by meditating on every scripture where Jesus healed somebody or raised somebody from the dead. Then I closed my Bible, shut my eyes, and saw myself raising Lazarus from the dead. I saw myself raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. Everything Jesus did, I saw myself do. I pictured what it would look like when Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, John eleven thirty nine. 39. I was engaging my imagination. I began believing it was possible to see people raised from the dead after reading what Jesus said in the Gospel of John. This inspired me to believe that God would do miracles through me. I thought about all of the miracles Jesus performed and said, Father, can I raise someone from the dead? I meditated on this so much that every night in my dreams, I raised a dozen people from the dead. I had dreams about going into morgues and emptying them out. After about six months, I actually saw a person raised from the dead with my physical eyes. But then 10 or 15 years went by before I saw this happen again. One day, I again felt inspired by God to start imagining people being raised from the dead, and pretty soon, I was dreaming about it again. Then one night, I got a phone call that my own son had died. He had been dead for four and a half hours when I received the call. I just started thanking God for his goodness and magnifying him above the circumstances. By the time I arrived at the hospital, my son had come back to life, but it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been meditating on and imagining God's raising from the dead power. Before you see something happen on the outside, you have to see it on the inside. It has to become so real to you that you see yourself doing it. You won't see the miracle power of God if you are defeated, discouraged, or depressed in your imagination. Stop limiting God with your imagination. Resurrect your imagination and start using it in a positive way. All right, thank you. Awesome. So again, uh, the title of the section is uh, Seeing on the Inside, which kind of goes back to uh, a continuation of... Uh, what he was saying about who, who, uh, how do you see yourself. And so, you know, I like how he went down this. is also coming back to the Word of God. You know, he was talking about healing where he, he, he began to study of the Scripture about healing. And he began to see himself healed when he needed healing. He, be, he began to describe how, how he, he saw Jesus raise people from the dead. And he asked the Father, can I raise people from the dead? You know... Uh, we have so many, and uh, Andrew Womack's uh, uh, website, uh, he has so many uh, uh, healing journeys. Of, uh, these, these are video document, doc, I can't get the word out. Documentation? They, thank you. Uh, uh, people's testimonies, both healing journeys, uh, destiny journeys, uh, which has a lot to do, some of them have to do with finances and whatnot. But it just, uh, um, so many, but, Several of them are regarding healing, and you'll you'll see several healing testimonies. Uh, people who have some very vicious diseases, cancer, even a guy who had cancer on the outside of his chest for for uh, for quite some time, and they would just get in the Word of God regarding the healing scriptures, standing on that word, believing God's promises. Uh, removing any other any other source of imagination that would tell them anything contrary to the Word of God. We were talking this morning about uh, laboring to enter that rest. Rest means to trust God. And they were determined to trust God and His Word no matter what it looked like on the outside, no matter how long it took, no matter what the symptoms were. They were going to trust God and they were not taking no for an answer. They weren't begging God to do something he already did 2,000 years ago, but they didn't know, I don't always understand why it took so long. Some was longer than others, some was shorter than others, but they were going to stand on God's word, and they had, there was a fight. It was a fight of faith at times, but they had, and the, the fight is with our imaginations. The fight is with us. It's a labor to enter into that rest. 
But we need to taste and see that the Lord is good. And sometimes when we taste, because of circumstances, some of us have given up too easy, and we have a sour taste in our mouth, thinking that God's not going to come through. But that's not the, what the Word of God teaches. The Word of God teaches God is faithful to His Word. He honors His Word above His name. And we faith comes by hearing the Word of God, and we live by faith. And so if we need healing, we need provision, we need a breakthrough, we need to stand on the Word of God like there's nothing, there's no tomorrow. And in standing on the Word of God, we're not trusting what we're doing, we're trusting God. There, there was something Sherry uh, referred to, I don't, I'll see if I can find it, but it was a comment today from my message this morning. Uh, someone made a comment uh, in regards to my message this morning. And let me see if I can find it here real quick. I'm almost here. But uh, the question was, what do you think? If I have to do anything to please, fa please Father, am I back under the law? This was my response. Our faith in Jesus is what pleases God. And if we have faith in Jesus, that's key. Our faith is in Jesus, not ourselves. Then God is pleased with us on the basis of what Jesus has done and not what we do. Our faith is in Jesus. Our, you know, it's a fine line between us putting our faith in our faith. Our faith in what we're doing. Our faith in our prayer. Our faith in our religious activity. Even though it's good, it's noble, it's the right thing. We're not resting in what we're doing. We're not putting our faith in what we're doing. We're putting our faith in Jesus. We're putting our faith in His Word that says, By His stripes we were healed. We are putting our faith in His Word, His promises that will not return void. That it says, That by my God shall supply my needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There was a word on, I think, uh, uh, my father-in-law said today. My, my father sends me uh, uh, some verse every day, and it was good. Um, and either one of them you can pull up, Sherry, either one from my dad or my father-in-law. Uh, but they both send a verse today. But, uh, but you know, uh, I like that because it's a, it's a promise. It's a promise. All the promises of God are yes and amen. And it's encouraging. And I forget why I was going to go with this, why I'm even having you look these up. But my point, I had a point I was going to make. But anyway, it just, uh, you know, we need to live and breathe the Word of God. And, and, and it's, it's not just a word on the page. It's not just so we feel good and we and praise God, we, hopefully we do. But it's, it's, it's a promise. It's alive. It's real. It's, it, it, it's, it's true. And those promises are more true than my circumstances. My circumstances are natural. They're temporary. But the Word of God is eternal. And it's, it's, it's forever. And, and, and I can bet, I don't care what it looks like in the natural. I don't care what it looks like in the physical. I can trust God. And we need to see ourselves, our situation, our circumstances through the lens of the Word of God. To be naturally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8, 6. And as a man thinketh, so is he. We need to think the way we see you know, in the parable of the sower, <coughs> we have the seed, the same word, the same seed being sown on four different types of soil. And the different types of soil determine the different outcome, not the seed. It was, and, 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 in, and in Mark's uh, version and in Luke's version, they, after the parable of the sower, Jesus says something. Mark says it a little different than Luke. But Mark, I forget who says it which way, but one of them says, uh, quotes Jesus who says, and, and, and respond to the parable, so take heed what you hear. And the other one says, uh, take heed how you hear. What we listen to and how we listen to it determines whether that seed is going to be fruitful. Philemon 1.6 says that the communication of your faith becomes effectual as you acknowledge every good thing that's in you in Christ Jesus. If we want our faith and the communication of our faith, actually the word commu com communication in the Greek is koinia in that particular verse. The, koinia, the fellowship of our faith, the communication of our faith becomes effectual as we acknowledge every 
good thing that's in us in Christ Jesus. And we're not going to know every good thing that's in us that's in Christ Jesus without relationship with the Word of God. But as we acknowledge it, not just read about it, but we acknowledge it, we, we put faith to it, and faith without action is dead. So if we're going to trust God, then God says He'll supply our needs, then we need, we, or, or whatever the case may be, then usually there's going to be an action to it. For one of those actions is we need to stop talking the way we talk. We need to stop acknowledging we're sick, and we need to start acknowledging we're well. It says we need to acknowledge uh, 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 every good thing that's in us in Christ Jesus. And you might be saying, but I still feel sick. Faith is not based on what you feel. Faith is based on what the Word of God says. Ba faith is not based on the physical circumstances, even if you still have the symptoms. Faith is based on the Word of God say says. And, the, and, and, and it says in, I think it's in Romans chapter 10, the, the, the righteous of faith speaks. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about faith sees. Faith sees. I see by faith myself healed. I see by faith, well, faith, my, 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 God, my God meeting my needs. I see things by faith. And because I see things by faith, what I see by faith should be more real than what I see in the natural. This needs to be more real to us than what we see in the natural. If that's not the case, then we in that under instance is lim are limiting God. And I've done that many times. I need to allow my faith to change my circumstances and not allow my circumstance to dictate my faith. I need to let the Word of God be the authority over the circumstance to feed the multitudes, to, to do what God's called me to do, <coughs> to be what God's called me to be. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> but we need to live, walk, by faith, not by sight. The Christian life is not about walking by sight, what we see, what we feel, that our natural senses. We need to walk by what the Word of God says. I don't care what the circumstances look like. We need to walk by faith and not by sight. Any, Paul says any, in Romans, anything that's not of faith is sin. Why? Why? Because we walk by faith. They just live by faith. It's the word of God. Anything that's not trusting God is of ourselves. It's, it's of our own doing. It's not of God. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it His way. And it's time for us, the church, to rise up. We have the the the. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the fullness of God. We have the same power to raise Christ from the dead. We need to see ourselves the way God sees us. And so we can do the things God has called us to do. The world is waiting on us. On you, me. God is waiting on us. We are not waiting on God. He's not the one stuck. We are. And God's faith. Faith, faith, and we need to be reminded. We need to meditate and chew on it, and then act on it as it's so. Anyway, anything? Well, I have the two verses okay. that yeah. that Dave uh, referred to. Uh, one uh, from Dave's dad is Deuteronomy thirty three seven. Underneath are the everlasting arms. Mm. And in Psalm, uh, my dad sent Psalm uh, twenty-seven, fourteen. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yeah, and you know, waiting on the Lord is faith. Waiting on the Lord is not necessarily being passive or lazy or complacent, but it's also being still, knowing that He's God. And it's waiting on him. It's you know, it's even waiting on him. I, I think that you know when, 
you go to a restaurant, the, the, the waitress or waiter will wait on you. They'll serve you. Um, uh, there's another uh, analogy of that, too. You know, uh, it's, it's not we're just waiting for God to do something. No. We are waiting with expectation. We're waiting. Uh, uh, we're waiting to serve. We're waiting to, uh, uh, you know, um, you know. Uh, it's almost like when I'm waiting in line, I'm waiting in expectation. I'm, I, I, I'm ready. I, I'm, I don't know. Might be another con. There's another connotation of that I've used. Like I can't think of that that right now. But it just, you know, we're not waiting on God. We're not waiting passively. We're not just twiddling our thumbs. No, we're not just sitting on the on our couch just being lazy, waiting for someone to hand us a check, so to speak. You know, when I'll give you an example, and hopefully this helps. Back, back when Dave and I had lost everything back in... 2009. 2009. Uh, Dave and I have been asked so many times, what did you do to get out of that? And we're like, we just knew God was the only one who, to get us out. We trusted him. People were looking for a formula. But when they found out that we trusted him, they were like, they could, they, it, there's no light bulb going on. And they would walk away and you could see the disappointment on their faces because they wanted a step-by-step how-to to get themselves out of what they're going through. And yet, when Dave and I were in that season, we just didn't stay in bed or sit on the couch and, and wait for something to be placed in our hands. We actively searched for work. We actively did things uh, for my grandma, who we were living with at the time. We cleaned up her backyard. We did chores around the house, you know, we, we did things because you can't just sit there and wait passively, as Dave's saying, and, and waiting for something to be handed to you on a silver platter. You, you still, you, you do something, but you're, you're doing it until God gives you new direction, so to speak. You, you are trusting in God, but you're not just physically sitting still. Spiritually and in your soul and your mind, you do, you are meditating on God's word. You are standing firm. You, firm. You are choosing to trust God, but you're not just sitting on your tush. You are okay, God. Until you give me direction, I'm gonna do what I know to do now. And so we knew we needed work, so we applied for every job that that we could. And yes, it was discouraging if we just looked at that and said, okay, we've applied for all these jobs. You think one would hire us, uh, but we didn't. We said, okay, God, we're trusting you to, to direct us to the right job. But while we're waiting on you, and I'm pointing to my husband because he just referred to the waiting part, we are going to do what we know to do in the moment. And then finally, in 2013, in October of 2013, God, we went to a Bible college that we wanted to go to. We wanted to enroll. We had a desire, but we, we didn't have, still didn't have what Sherry just got started get started working part time. Um, I hadn't had work yet, and God put on our hearts to apply full time, not just me, but both of us full time, not two part full time students. With no money, with no income. We had a little bit of money because of what she's making. We were going to put that towards uh, getting ourselves out of this hole that we were in. And God told us to apply and, and register full time. That took all the money out of our pockets uh, that we had. The little money we needed for food and, and the car and the phone and different things that we needed just to, 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 to get ourselves out of this hole. God finally gave us a word. And it didn't always make sense in the natural. We do it. But within one hour of obeying God to do something that seemed to be out of order, I got a job. And then we never went back. And, and the job that I had uh, started 
was a job at a computer repair shop. And I'm not a techie person. I know that much about computers. But a friend of the owners worked with my sister who had been praying for us to get work. But the, but the friend had talked to my sister. Hey, my friend needs someone to help out at the shop. My sister said, oh, can my sister apply? And so it, it all kind of click, click, click. And I, and I had the, the, I sat down, I had the interview and I got the job with, I mean, God gave me favor. I mean, I, I know that this is a laptop, that's a desktop. I know how to check my email. I mean, I know how to get on Word and Excel, but you don't ask me to teach any classes on it, but I, I had to learn really quick about uh, certain things when customers would, would come in the shop with their computers. I had to learn, you know, start to ask questions about things and and uh, learn real quick, but I was given such favor and God helped me learn. You know, I'm, I'm still, you know, it's been a while since I've had that job, so don't ask me to repair your computer. I didn't do the repairs, I did work in the front office um, and talked with customers. But, but see, when we limit God, it, uh, we can't, we we're not open to stepping stones into what he has for us. And some people might be stubborn and know, I'm only going to uh, look for work in this certain arena or this certain pay or whatever it might be. You know, when we first got got married, our, our second year of marriage, we, we both needed jobs. And I had grown up not working outside of babysitting. I stayed at home. I helped my parents. Uh, you know, I went through high school, all the way up through high school. And so I, I never needed to work. But in our second year of marriage, I did need to get a job. So... I was in the place I, I was not too long ago, and I said, Dave, I don't have schooling outside of high school. I don't have any work experience. I don't even know to where to begin to work. And Dave planted one seed in my head. If you had any job that you wanted to do, what would it be? And I had grown up uh, since, I think, seventh grade in being around the elderly and uh, my, my dad had church and Bible studies in nursing homes. So I was like, well, you know, I, I love being around the elderly. They are really cool people. And so Dave said, look for work in that arena. And I was like, uh, okay, I still don't know how to look for work, but okay, I will. And just down the road from us, close enough for me to ride my bike to, was this brand new facility that was... Uh, a nursing home and I just I either walked in or called in I forget if I'm mixing up my interview oh I think I'm, I'm mi mixing up with the interview but I, I called in and asked if, if they were accepting applications and they said yes what would you like to do and I was like well I'm open I guess front desk receptionist I don't know I, I was very naive and just I don't know even to them I was like I don't know just I want to apply uh, but when I went in for the interview and they found out that I loved actually working with the elderly, they said, well, why don't you apply for this position? And I got that job. And it was, it was so fun. It's this brand new, sparkly clean facility that was, uh, I don't know if state of the art is the, is the, is the right word, but it was a, it was a place that I would send anyone to because it, it was the fan, most fantastic staff, it was the nicest facility, at least at the time, that was almost 20 years ago, but um, I had so much fun. And when we moved back to California, they actually gave me a going away party. I mean, this, this is a job that I stepped out in faith knowing, not even knowing if my right hand was to, to scratch my nose and pat, and my right hand to do pat my head, whatever it is, I, I just went out and trusted God. And again, he, he opened doors for me. And so we're just encouraging you to take the limits off God. You know, use your imagination. There is a difference between 
fantasy and imagination. When we take our minds and dwell on what God's word says, that's the imagination we're supposed to have. Excuse me. All right. Well, that's awesome, Jerry. Uh, I, I enjoyed a lot. Um, anyway, we didn't get very far uh, as far as uh, getting to the length of the book, but uh, um, but that's fine. I thought it was just really good. I really got a lot out of tonight. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, beneficial. Uh, again, sorry for those who may be a little lost, but we've had some uh, technical issues with our Facebook Live. Uh, not so much this podcast, but we, we have another uh, avenue we were going to uh, live stream. I don't know if it worked or didn't work. And uh, Anyway, so there might be a few frustrating things. We're going to get those ironed out. We're going to wrap it up tonight, pick it up next week. And uh, I don't know. We didn't get very far tonight, so we might still have another two weeks at, at least uh, at this uh, on this last chapter. Uh, the way things are going right now, but once we, I just want to throw this out here as a uh, to kind of a filler. Uh, once we're done with this book on Don't Let the God, we're going to be doing a new book on the true nature of God, and so uh, we're going to be just continuing on, on on this theme once we go uh, for continue once we finish and complete this book. I'm kidding. I'm probably wrapping up because I can't talk straight. Anyway, uh, but anyway, let me just pray us out. And Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your faithfulness. We give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, we just we just thank you. And uh, uh, Lord, I thank you for your blessing, your strength, your energy, and your provision for the week that we had. Uh, God bless, bless you. We love you. And Lord, we just thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Amen. So, Lord, we just, uh, I mean, people, I, I, I'm just losing it. I, I, I must be tired. But anyway, God bless you guys. We love you. We'll see you next week. And uh, have a good week. God bless.